another weekend, another F5J competition. This time Bruggen Schwalmtal in northwest corner of Germany, just next to the border with Netherlands. We've been here before and it's been as windy as it is today. Remember this place, wind turbines in the background to the north and a few bushes next to the flying place and then towards the east there's a line of trees and fields all around us nice and open. So last time we were here there were some bushes here along this road and in the meantime they were cut down so the first usable obstacle that would generate lift is far down there I would say some 400 meters away from the starting line everything else is open we have north slightly easterly wind something like 030 or so and you see the windsock there in the camp being overshadowed by the trees every now and then otherwise you can check the wind turbines what the wind is doing so you see we are pointing almost exactly into the wind so pilots have two choices basically fly upwind all the way down to those trees hope to hook a wave of warm air that's being lifted off by those trees or fly downwind and try their luck there this is now start of the first flyoff we have 62 pilots registered here flying only eight in the flyoffs since the field doesn't have room for more and now these are the top eight pilots they will all try downwind nobody's going into the wind so i've seen this practice recently you just stay low to the ground and do some tight circling with motor at full power hoping to stir the air into something that will develop into a lift so I've seen this practice in free flights competitions it's very funny there you see the whole team waving their shirts running across the field hoping to disturb the warm air sticking to the ground into unsticking that's quite a sight so I'm assuming this low high power circling is hoping to achieve something similar so now I have one plane above me and there's still this guy here above the corridor and slowly moving above me as well That will be difficult to have, get good shots of. My knees and my back definitely don't appreciate this. Let's 
leave this guy. What are the others doing? Some are still low to the ground, quite far away though. And this is the risk I was talking about. You have to find something down there that gives you enough height that you're able to come back. In previous years, when we didn't have the motor restart possibility, this was a much rarer sight, because in case this didn't work out, pilot or his helper needed to take quite a hike to retrieve the model. Nowadays, people can just fly back home when if they give up. Look like this guy hooked up a bird and they're merely circling together. This is still quite low to the ground. This is not yet a safe height. And we have quite a wind blowing. I would say this is six to eight meters per second gusting even higher occasionally. So imagine if you are sticking to your thermal that's being carried away by the wind, that means you are like 8 meters per second, 8 meters further away each second. And in 15 minutes this adds up a lot. So you have to come back at some point before that. some pilot already taking a walk to retrieve his plane. I think it's over there. Looks like he didn't use the motor. So flying here, in my experience, has been always windy. And I talked to pilots yesterday, it was even more interesting. So there were showers in the area, cumulus clouds everywhere, causing all kinds of interesting atmospheric conditions. Apparently at one point someone got a thousand point score with a starting height of 240 meters. Everyone else was on the ground in the minutes. And he managed to... He didn't make a full time, but he was in the air for the longest. Now the sky has cleared, but in the morning it was still broken clouds and it was quite rare to see a full 10 minute flight. Planes were down in like 6 to 8 minutes and thermals were still quite rare. 
I mean, despite the showers yesterday, the ground is very dry, as you can see. So, not much moisture that would create thermals. So, not difficult flying. Now I only see one plane, have to check where are all the others. I heard the motor behind me and then there's the other guy walking, that's two out of eight. Then there's one plane that I see, that's three. I have no clue where are the other five. So let's stick to this guy that we actually can see. I would say he's at a safe height, just needs to wait for the time to pass and keeping good air, staying good air. Huh, now I see a second plane, similar height, similar distance, a bit more to the left. Looks like they have different strategies of coming home. One is pointing straight into the wind, while the other one is flying a bit at an angle. Maybe looking for some additional lift, but it's not like he actually needs it. So now both are slowly returning. I 
think it's just a few minutes left. Two minutes remaining. So maybe take a look. Let's take a look. Where are the other ones? I don't see any, but there's a interesting flock of birds here this guy looks nice What does the clock say? 40 seconds. So now I would expect to see some planes on final approach. Okay, that was the first flight. Let's wait for the second one. Fifty-five seconds till the second start. And let's see who will be the lowest now. Conditions are much the same. I expect the tactics to be the same as well. Birds that I can see. It's all above me. Uh, looks like the flock is now quite close. Actually, these guys down there are higher than the ones above me or behind me. And they are already gaining height. Quite good. So these two will have a bit more work to do. But I'm sure.
sure they'll manage. Weather is just too nice. And they even have a bird up there. That's cool. There's the second bird now. And the whole flock is gaining fast. Looks like someone started late. It's too early to give up. Not sure what happened there. Looks like even birds are now giving up. They don't need as much height to hunt around here apparently. And they're quite happy staying low to the ground. On topic of birds, I'm used to seeing black and grey crows in the fields like this but a member of the corvid family that's flying around here is not a crow I looked up their English name it's a smaller species that I'm used to seeing in the Alps in the mountains and apparently the English name is Alpine Cough. They have completely different vocalization compared to crows. And at least in the Alps I know they are very fond of slope soaring. One thing you never see crows do is thermal soaring. Not sure why. But these smaller ones, they, every now and then they take advantage of updrafts. So let's put some horizon in for reference. To see how high and how far these guys already are. And we are not even five minutes into the flight yet. looks like five minutes in and they all already made the flight now I'm getting all kinds of interesting noises around me as you see this is a farmland and now there's a Vector doing something. I'm not an expert on farming activities, but I know it's noisy. And there's an airplane flying above me somewhere. I'm not even attempting to locate.
so the airspace here is quite busy. I mean, it's a corner of the European continent where most of the flights going to Atlantic crossing fly over. And we see plenty of dead flights, of those flights. Then there are apparently a couple of airports in the vicinity, certainly one to the south and probably something to the west as well. I've seen commercial airliners going down on what looked like approach patterns. And then there's uh, sports airfields to the north, way uh, some few kilometers beyond those wind turbines. I've seen sailplanes circling in that direction. Now we have another of these Atlantic crossing planes here. Another airplane over there of the general aviation variety. Super busy. But yeah, it's a very nice day. It would be a shame not to spend it in the air one way or another. While I was looking away, I completely lost track of where the planes are. Our planes, F5J models. So far, I only see one. If I can zoom in, no, I don't see it in this way. There he is. It's time to slowly start planning trip back home. It looks like that's exactly what he's doing. Or maybe not. It feels like wind has picked up a bit. I 
I guess it's just a thermal somewhere downwind flying up into the sky. Let's see if this will affect our pilots. So I hear a victory loop just above my head. But let's try to see how will that guy far away come home. So it looks like there are at least three other planes already above me. Two minutes to go and he's still pretty far away. You have enough height but you step on it. Convert it into speed. Thirty seconds. Nicely done. And I think there's one more flight. Let's see. No, apparently not. Just two flyouts today. And we'll now wait for the prize giving ceremony. Ja, liebe Leute, anders als zu Hause habe ich hier meist das erste und das letzte Wort. Heute ist es nicht ganz so, danach kommt noch die Sieger, ja, und die macht der Daniel. Ich möchte mich aber schon mal für euer hier gewesen sein und auch hier sein bedanken. Hat es euch denn gefallen? Ja. Ja.
Leute, so. Hört sich doch gut an. Ja, das ist das Wichtigste für uns, weil wir haben euch gerne hier, immer wieder, hoffen, dass ihr nächstes Jahr auch wiederkommt. Das hier auf die Beine zu stellen, ist ein bisschen mit Arbeit verbunden. Da hatten wir ganz viele Helfer, bei denen wir uns jetzt mal hier oder ich mich als Vorstand auch ganz herzlich bedanken möchte. Wir hatten roundabout 40 bis 50 Mitglieder im Verein, die hier am Wochenende tätig waren. Viele davon habt ihr als Zeitnehmer und dergleichen gesehen. Ne, Würstchen, Kuchen, das gemacht worden, verkauft worden und alles drum und dran. Aber ganz besonderen Dank gilt den dreien hier, den Daniel, den Michael und den Matthias, die das hier Jahr für Jahr auf die Beine stellen und wie ich finde, einfach ganz toll. Und, und das natürlich auch eine ganze Menge Hintergrundarbeit drin, monatelange Arbeit, Vorbereitung und so weiter. Herzlichen Dank dazu. Der Michael ist übrigens seit Januar bei uns im Vorstand, er ist zweiter Vorsitzender. Irgendwann wird er das erste und letzte Wort haben, hoffe ich doch. Ja, jetzt soll ich auch nicht länger aufhalten. Ran an die Siegerehrung. Einen noch, kommt gut nach Hause nachher. Fahrt vernünftig, friedlich, unfallfrei, so wie das ganze Wochenende hier hoffentlich gewesen ist. Tschüss. Ja, vielen Dank. Ich möchte mich auch nochmal bedanken bei den Helfern des Vereins, die uns hier so tatkräftig unterstützt haben, bei den Zeitnehmern, denen die uns mit Kuchen versorgt haben, die die einfach nur dazu beigetragen haben, dass das heute gelingt. Dazu gehören auch... Ja, der DMFV und der DAEC, Knut und Hans-Joachim haben uns kräftig unterstützt. Äh, Contest, der Uwe hat uns unterstützt, dafür möchten wir uns auch ganz herzlich bedanken. Äh, ohne die Verbände und äh, Contest wäre das eben auch nicht möglich, sowas auf die Beine zu stellen. Und ähm, ja, denen gilt eben auch unser Dank. Wir möchten jetzt fortfahren mit der Siegerehrung, starten mit den Jugendlichen. Äh, ich rufe ähm, die Plätze auf, freue mich auch, wenn die... Jugendlichen nach vorne kommen, die weiter hinten platziert sind, aber dann haben wir die auch entsprechend mit auf einem Foto, das ist uns ganz wichtig. Und ja, wir starten mit dem sechsten Platz, das ist Leonard Kortem Freundel. Neben fünfter Platz, Adrian Gallet. Entschuldigung, fifth, fünfter Platz, fifth place, Adrian Galli. It's not Junior. Ah, he is in the list at Junior. Okay, then stay there. Leonard, du bist dann fünfter Jugendlicher. Dann haben wir den. So schnell kann es gehen. Vierter Platz, Anne Ganzer. Vielleicht bleibst du auch noch fürs Foto da. Dann äh, dritter, dritter Platz und dann jetzt aber bei den Rängen, die mit einem Pokal ausgestattet werden, Romien Gallet. Hey. Zweiter Platz bei den Jugendlichen, Jan Fischer. Und erster Platz, Lukas Dietrich. Ja, vielen Dank euch. 
Dann machen wir weiter mit den Senioren. Äh, achter Platz, Jörg Siska. Siebter Platz, Florian Kreuz. Sechster Platz, der, der den Pokal vorher mal gewonnen hat, das war 2019, als wir zuletzt fliegen konnten, Sebastian Feigl. Fünfter Platz, Dominik Prestele. Vierter Platz, Pascal van Ohl. Dritter Platz und punktgleich mit dem zweiten Platz, aber nur aufgrund des ja, nur wenige Punkte schlechteren Vorrundenergebnisses, damit dritter, ist Lukas Dietrich. Ja, zweiter Platz, Ryan Höllein. Ja, erster Platz, Sieger des Burgpokals, das war er auch schon 2019, äh, nee, 2018, vor dem Sebastian Tom Mertens. Ja, dann sagen wir abschließend nochmal herzlichen Dank für einen sportlich fairen Wettbewerb, einen tollen Burgpokal 2022. Wir freuen uns, wenn wir euch ganz bald wiedersehen können und wünschen euch allen jetzt einen guten und sicheren Heimweg. Vielen Dank, dass ihr da wart.